Hello? What is up, guys? And welcome back to week technically number three, but I'm going to say episode two because that first one was just an intro and I don't think that one counted, to be frank. But uh, I appreciate you guys coming back to listen. I'm glad you liked the first episode. It seemed that I got a pretty good response out of it. Uh, Luckily for me, Zach was a really good talker. We've known each other for a while, so that was one of the reasons that I asked him to sit down and talk with me. It's just, like you guys know, this is only my second episode, uh, and he was my first interview, so I'm just trying to work all the bugs out, you know? I mean, there's definitely some things I have to fix. If you haven't figured it out yet, I decided to put an intro before uh, all the episodes now. Um, I just think that it gives you a little bit better of a base to start to uh, build off of from the guest that's on this week. I mean, if I give you a little breakdown like about who the person is, you kind of are able to get a base for him like i said and uh a lot of my favorite podcasters they all do intros so i mean they uh it's something that i like that they do so i figured i'd do it myself but again last week i didn't uh put an intro in there but i appreciate zach pishney for coming on uh it was a great time talking to him i thought it went really well uh and i'm excited for uh for this week's episode uh let me get to that So my guest this week is Matt Metrovich or Metro.Digital on Instagram. Uh, That's probably, I mean, that's what I know him from. That's how I first came across him. So Matt is a creative, okay? So uh, I asked him to describe himself, and you'll hear in the interview, he calls himself a creative, which is definitely something that is... uh, it's just a cool way to describe yourself because he does so many different things. You're going to listen to him talk about photography, videography, digital design, uh, actual like physical artwork. And it's just cool. He has a cool background. Uh, we talk about how he got into technology and how, uh, it kind of progressed into what he's doing today. And, uh, for being a younger dude, he's, he's out there killing it. And I thought he was an interesting person. So I wanted to sit down and speak with him. This was the first time I met him. And, uh, I, I like to go to wherever the guest wants to go so we could interview there because I feel like that it's a, it's just cool to be in like someone else's vibe, you know, like, uh, I just think that that brings a little bit too for me, but Unfortunately for this week, the sound I feel was not as good as I would have hoped because we interviewed, uh, I interviewed Matt above the Market Street Grocery, I think it's called. Yeah, Market Street Grocery. But uh, it's just a space up there. It was kind of a bigger room, so a lot of it echoed. So uh, I tried to edit up this this audio and make it sound as good as I can. And, uh, that's just something that I'm going to learn from, learn from your mistakes, not to do it in a big ass room with, uh, yeah, with, uh, high ceilings and big walls. So, uh, we could have a little bit better sound for everyone. But other than that, I mean, the whole conversation went well. It was pretty cool. Like I said, I'm working out the bugs of all this shit so i'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it and how i like it like what questions to ask i i feel that last week's episode was more of a just an interview like me ask a question me hear an answer me ask a question me hear an answer and that's what i'm really trying to not do but it's hard it's hard when you start out uh my my goal for all this is to just have a conversation 
But as we're having the conversation, I, I want to be able to to pull out questions uh, of certain things that I, I mean that I want to know. But uh, I kind of just want it to run a little bit smoother. So I'm going to just keep working my hardest at this and just keep trying to uh, improve it, improve the sound, improve the flow of the conversation. And I'm sure in time I'll be a little bit more, uh, uh, what's the word? I'm sure in time I'll pick up a little bit better and it'll go better. But uh yeah, man, keep going with me on this, and uh, I'm going to keep having some good guests. Again, I appreciate Matt coming on, and uh, without further ado, I present to you episode three of the I'll Call You Right Back podcast with Matt Metrovich, a.k.a. Metro Digital. Testing levels. Yeah, we're good. Cool. Yeah, levels are right. And we are good. And we're rolling. So, it's halfway through January. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How was your holiday? It was great. Great. Now, uh, tell the listeners who you are. Um, my name is Matt Metrovich. I'm a creative, I guess. A creative. Um, I, I do all kinds of stuff, and it's really hard to label myself, but I do like video and photo and design and a whole bunch of other stuff but in general i just say creative person with with an infinity for technology yeah you don't want to put a label on what you are it's just like you don't know exactly what you are yet so yeah you do so many things i follow your instagram uh metro digital for people that are listening now and uh i see you have a lot of uh photography on there would you say that that is like your main focus at this second um yeah photography is kind of like well photography is the bread and butter of like my social media because it's so easy to share and it's way easier to yeah. to produce than other yeah, work you take a photo put one right on instagram yeah. and then yeah but even then go. my my process for that is it's not just taking a photo because i usually do a bunch of editing oh, i'm sure stuff i'm and, sure you, i see right. that uh all your photographs have like a certain I wouldn't say like a theme, but like a feel to them. Yeah. Like I see a lot of blues and oranges and yeah. things like that. What's your method to all that? Like what's your uh, thought process behind all that? So even like going more full scale than just Instagram, because it's, it's not just like supposed to be an Instagram page or anything. I mean, that's where I have most of my following at currently. Yeah. Um, But Metro Digital is kind of a creative studio that I kind of developed for myself because I like making art using technology and and I just want to that that's very vague but I like making videos and photos I like teaching myself new things all the time so I'm a huge fan of I'm just a technology enthusiast in general like I've I've built uh, yeah like I'm a total nerd that's fine build build my own computers and that's you know my laptop is like crazy and now, before we get too far off of this, let's start from the beginning. Let's yeah, rewind back okay. to the beginning. How did you get into being uh, a tech nerd? Like, how did you get into technology? Okay, so as far as I can remember, like, probably back in, like, fourth grade, like, my first computer class, like, ever, it just made sense to me. Like, yeah. I just started using a computer, and it just clicked. Fell in love with it. Yeah, and... Kind of yeah. spider web from there. Yeah, yeah. So I just liked sitting on the computer and using it because there was like so many opportunities yeah, and there's so much pool of, of yeah. anything that you could find. Especially yeah. nowadays, like with the internet. I mean, we all have cell phones now and it's just like literally just uh, a whole world in the palm of your hand. Anything you need to know, you can just pick up your phone and look at it. Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess... To start with, I got into technology just through using a computer and then getting more and more interested in just like tech news and video games and actually how they worked and why they worked and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and more behind the scenes type stuff. Yeah, and then I guess from a very, very early age, I wanted to get into computers. I wanted to be like a programmer 
or something, and I you wanted knew to... from whenever you were younger that you wanted to be involved with the technical phase coming up in. Yeah, I was because I knew it was going to be huge, yeah, and I was so absolutely. excited for the future, and I wanted to be a part of that in some way. And I, you know, in like middle school, me like planned to work at Google, and that was like you know my big yeah for sure thing. Like I, I just wanted to work for a big tech company, and I got to visit Google when I was in like ninth grade, so that oh, yeah? also really helped. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Finleyville, Pennsylvania. How That's that? uh, south of Pittsburgh. It was, you know, suburbs, like small. Yeah. Um, and, you know, moving to Pittsburgh, it's, it's, I, a, different I, world. I, I, it's a different world, but I definitely love living in the city I better bet. than that. But yeah, my whole growing up was kind of in a, like a smaller town. Yeah. Now, did you live in like the sticks, like back in like wooded type place, or did you live in a uh, sort of like a... I I, I lived on Route 88, so like one of the main oh, okay. roads into Pittsburgh. So I, I was I, I'm on the bus line, and I'm next to the I'm I'm the last trolley stop for reference. Like so, like Library Station is the last trolley stop that goes outside of Pittsburgh, and that's like ten minutes from my house. So that's that's for relatives. So I'm just close enough to get into the city, but like pretty far away still. Yeah, so. still out of it. So you're not inside of uh, the whole like. Uh, city feel of it all. Yeah, still somewhat of a small town that you grew up in. Yeah, I grew up in Elizabeth, so it was kind of a similar type of town. It was uh, we're surrounded by a lot of woods, yep. and uh, you would have like your main popping areas, and then it would either be like you're you're in farmland, or you're in like a little neighborhood, things like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean we were still pretty far out. Like we still had tractors driving down the highway. Oh, like, I bet you know it's you know. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, I bet. Especially coming down here and being uh, submersed in all the city and all this uh, busy lifestyle. Yeah. What kind of things did you take up in school? Like, how did you get into technology in school? Um, so, very early on, I was into computers. Like, I think my first computer class, I was playing around in, like, some random 3D, very basic 3D program that was just pre-installed on the computer. Yeah. It was, like, a globe spinning around in circles, and you could just, like, mess with it, I think. Okay. I, very faint memory of that. Was that just, like, a uh, computer class of, like, a general knowledge? Just, yeah. like, learning more of computers? Uh, yeah, it was just, computers? like, I think my uh, third or fourth grade, but it was just, like, a beginning computer class. It was, like, the first time I've ever gotten on a computer. But I just remember, like, being really interested in, like, how computers worked and, like, and how just, uh, how, uh, how the internet was a thing and yeah, and how it started to like cuz i mean for us growing up like how old are you right now 20 you're 20 yeah okay so i'm 27 i remember being uh i remember whenever like the internet first started to be like a thing where i could like go on there and I remember it was for like uh, schoolwork and everything like that. We would have to yeah. go online and like get information and like cite things, and it was just a whole new world. And then slowly you get into like uh, I remember whenever my mom made my first screen name for AOL. It's like <laughs> she was trying to explain to me like this is a this is a chat room type thing. My brother is six years older than me, so like I kind of got all the bullshit filtered through him. Like he kind of did everything for me as far as like finding um the things that i wanted to do mm -hmm. and i pretty much just took after him so i just remember whenever the internet first became relevant and how insane that was to like wrap your mind around like there were so many things that you could do and uh basically back then the only thing i used it for was like aol and uh random things like that like youtube wasn't a thing yet so yeah. like all that shit happened. Yeah, I think I, I I had I just started using the internet when it got good. I think. Yeah, I mean because I bad, like though. I don't have a memory of like YouTube not existing. Like when I you know when I started using it in school. Besides for being in computer classes and things like that, what did you like about school? Uh, what did you do in school? Like what was your uh, what was a typical day in your life? Um, I did. I was in cross country and Boy Scouts were took up most of my time in school in middle and high school um i did cross country all the way till my 11th grade year um but and then i i got injured so i couldn't run too much anymore i i still bike i love biking yeah. um but yeah so i did cross country and boy scouts and boy scouts i'm actually an eagle scout right now um
and that was pretty much uh, what you did in like middle school era, things like that. Because I know the Boy Scouts definitely took up some time. Yeah, it's like you go camping every weekend, have to get shit like that done. Yeah, and then I guess probably the rest of the time was either spent in school or on, on video computers. games on the computer. <laughs> when uh, when did you get your first computer? How old were you? Ah. Uh, Either the end of I can't remember actually. Like I think middle school. Like I, my first computer I built myself. I know oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Like I researched the parts and like, just you know the graphics card and the processor and the motherboard and stuff. You know it's like Legos. It's super easy yeah, to build. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I just researched the parts, made sure they all worked together, and kind of built my own computer because I wanted it to. Gaming on a computer is so much better than like Xbox or yeah. PS3 or something. I'm not a video game guy no. whatsoever. Like I, I recently just bought an Xbox to play with, uh, to play Call of Duty with my friends that moved away. So it's like they're video game people. So for me to be able to like converse with them and everything, like that's pretty much. I uh, conformed and got Call of Duty, <laughs> and we just sit on there, and it's pretty much the same thing as hanging out. But yeah, you just play a video game instead of. But uh, you built your own computer, so like, were your parents into like tech? Like, were they tech nerds as well? They weren't. They weren't. Um, yeah, my dad works. He's a non-destructive technician. I guess would be the correct term. Like, he does like he he X-rays stuff like oh, okay. for industrial uh, purposes. So non-destructive testing. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then my mom was in like she worked in business at Mellon Bank. Okay, my yeah. mom works at PNC Bank. She's still there, so it's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So you got your first computer around middle school, end of middle school. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what did you basically use that for? Like, what do you remember? Like the first reasons for you to be on the internet. What made you want to get a computer? Um, I wanted to understand how it worked. Yeah. So I started like teaching myself programming, mm -hmm. like different languages, like. HTML, you know, just yeah, super basic, like just how sh the structure of a computer actually worked, and then video games. Yeah, video games. <laughs> what uh, what were some of the first games that you started to play on a computer? I just wanted all the games that I could like completely max out the settings for, like the best definition, yeah. like because I built the computer to yeah, be so specked you out, to test so, out. Um, oh, man. Like, Can't did you play, remember. like, Counter-Strike and things like that? Yeah, or? like, yeah, I definitely played, like, I, I was, I'm really big into shooters, so it oh, was, okay. like, shooting games, like, I, I like first-person games, yeah. like, action. Um, were you into, like, were you, you said you're 20, I'm 27, so, like, were you after the whole, like, Doom phase and, like, Wolfenstein? Cause yeah. Those I, were I, the games that I grew up on, is, like. I uh, missed out on that, yeah. Like, I started with, like, Fallout 3 and, like, oh, okay. um. Yeah, like Fallout and Call of Duty and, you know, all, all those that things. stuff. But and you yeah, played I, that I, all on the computer? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I missed, well, I had an Xbox 360 until I bought, I, until I built my computer. Yeah. Um, but the the new reincarnations of Wolfenstein and Doom yeah. are incredible. They yeah. look so the good. Old There's ones, like virtual reality versions of Doom now. It's incredible. The old ones were so, like, terrifying for me, like playing them because my brother was obviously older so it wasn't a big deal but yeah. whenever i would be in like first and second grade i would be playing them i remember playing them in my basement in the dark because that's how my brother would play them mm -hmm. and uh it would just scare the shit out of me it's like them big ass demons would come up and just like i would be freaked out and it ended yeah. up uh ended up being a uh a big point in my life like i would say that that was the first video game that i like actually played like that yeah. was probably the first one i remember that in wolfenstein oh i i'd say my first I, I, i'm this is coming back to me now pokemon how could i forget about pokemon pokemon and game boy like i had the game boy advanced sp and you yeah. had to like to trade pokemon you had to plug your uh, yeah, game plug boy into your, someone else's yeah. and i had all the cards and everything that was my entire like elementary I school. completely skipped over that like I was really? never a Pokemon guy I was more into the Pokemon because of like the whole collecting behind it like yeah I collect a bunch of shit like I collect like random things like Zippo lighters like I just I just like collecting things mm -hmm. and I remember collecting them cards was like the popping thing like all my friends had all these cards so obviously like I wanted to get involved with it as well but uh I myself took the whole like magic the gathering side of it so uh, oh, okay. are you familiar with that uh, not really. So, I know what it is, but... Yeah, so, like, Pokemon is, like, a little bit more of, like, a... I, know, I would call it a childish version of 
magic because like you would get these Pokemon cards and they're all bright colors and you see like Pikachu and it's like this this like uh, little yellow like nice looking creature and then you, you grab a magic card and it's like demons oh, okay. and like crazy ass things with fangs and oh, okay. stuff like that. But uh, most of my hobbies and things like that came from older relatives like my older cousins and my my brother so like i kind of just like took off everything that they had and kind of just like took that in as my own mm -hmm. built up with that but that's understandable pokemon game boy and everything like that was yeah probably the most popular it's probably still one of the most popular things in the world yeah. it's like pokemon go just kind of gave everything a resurgent mm -hmm. and now people are still playing that i guess <laughs> yeah i saw an article that said someone died trying to get a Pokemon. They, oh like, went God. off of, uh, they were uh, driving, tried to get one, and, like, wrecked their car, and they died. Oh it's just, God. like, that's a little bit nuts to me. But uh, video games, things like that on the computer, uh, what made you stem from being into computer and video games to getting into, like, photography and uh, videography and things like that? Like, when did that first come into play? In high school, I started watching, I was big on YouTube and watching like cool videos like a lot of people on YouTube would create these I don't even know like action sequences they're just like short yeah. three to five minute videos they're usually skits they're funny it has a funny beginning and yeah. end or whatever um, like rocket jump and corridor digital for people who know like those I mean they still produce videos but they're like uh, actual so like full companies now oh, um, wow. But, you know, when they were starting out, they would make these, like, video game spinoffs, like, if Mario in real life and, like, oh, if, that's it, sick. you know, and it was just, like, people doing, like, 3D effects, like, people, like, shooting fireballs out of their hands or whatever. Uh, but then for every video these people would make, they would make, like, a behind-the-scenes video. Yeah. And that's what we, got me interested. Yeah, how, very how similar things how, were made. Yeah, very similar in the why I got interested in technology, like, the how it works. Yeah, you just want to know how it works. Yeah. So I got into yourself. being creative. Mostly, video was my first like creative field because before that, I thought I, I would be a failure at art because you know like paint like standard like high school or you know school classes, painting or drawing or whatever. I can't do any of that. Yeah, I have no artistic so, ability whatsoever. Exactly. But so, I consider myself a creative person. Yeah, it's like I have all this shit in my head that I want to do, uh, but I just cannot put it on paper. Yeah. It's so, just, I have no artistic ability whatsoever. I mean, I can't put it on paper, but I can put it on a screen. So, yeah, so you're making it work. Yeah. Like, you got to make it work. Yeah. Now, uh, whenever you were younger, did you make like home movies? Like, did you have, uh, cause me and my friends, whenever we were younger, we would make like dumb movies with like our parents, like camera. We would just do like little skit type things, just like you were saying, but just random things. Like yeah. Not as early. Cause I, I am very like. I want to do it right or not do it at all. So like, it's understandable. I, I I'm a perfectionist, I guess. So if if I couldn't make a like a video, like how I envisioned it, yeah, then If I didn't have the it. means to do it, then I, I didn't want to. And I know that goes against like most photographers and stuff. Like they say, like the best camera is the one you have with you, kind of thing. And I'd say the best camera is actually the one with the highest specs and the biggest yeah. sensor. And, you know, I don't know. I, I'm just very, I would rather. Perfectionist. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, just want I'm things done the way you want them done. Yeah. So I, my first camera was actually like, uh, it was called a Blackmagic pocket camera, pocket cinema camera. It could film raw HD video, which was like in, insane. Like and six, how old were you when you had this? Uh, was maybe I think it was like ninth or tenth grade. I think it was tenth grade. Oh, okay. It was when I got my first camera. Yeah. My first video camera. Mm -hmm. It couldn't take pictures. Um, so what did you use that for? Like, what kind of videos did you make? I, I just made little skits with my friends. Um, I taught myself how to like create fire and gunshots and stuff like that. Oh, so that's awesome. I, I made like this stupid video where my friend was like drinking gasoline and then like lit a lighter and then blew fire out of his mouth or something. And that was all just visual effects? Yeah. Oh, that's wild. So I, I, I taught myself how to use, like, yeah, visual effects as well, like a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, um, like the editing and stuff as well. So in high school, whenever you were uh, into all this videography and things like that, 
did your school have an outlet for you to like expand your knowledge? Like, did you take classes? It, uh, it did not. So there were no like photography or video classes at all in, in any of my school schooling, except for like my last two years of high school, um, offered like a very basic video class. Um, Probably stuff you already knew. Yeah, it was it was like Sony handy cams, like the uh, actual yeah, yeah, like yeah. camcorders, and like iMovie. So it wasn't anything like robust. Like I, at that point, I was teaching myself like keyframing and After Effects. Like now, you use the internet to learn most of your yeah uh, most of your knowledge for all that stuff. Yeah, you go on the internet, find what you wanted to do, and just kind of perfect it how you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what's up. I mean, that's. That's what the internet's for is yeah, to... Yeah, mostly everything I've done in my life is basically either self-taught or through experience. It's never been through like... I mean, a, I tend to learn that way as well. It's like I, uh, if I want to do something, I become, a, like, I become obsessed, like uh, regardless of what it is. Like I made clothes before, like I had a clothing line at one point and uh, I just, I become obsessed with things and I want to learn everything inside and out of that mm-hmm. thing. And uh, regardless if I... Uh, just keep to it and keep doing it like uh, the clothing line just like kind of dissolved itself it's just like it's a saturated market like uh, and it wasn't something that like it's something that I'm passionate about but it it wasn't uh, it's one of them situations where you got to have money like to make the things that you actually want to make like just like you said if you can't make it the way you want to and perfect it the way you want to you don't want to do it yeah and that's where i was at it it's like to make the shit that i wanted to make i didn't have the money that i needed to didn't have the time that i needed to because growing up whenever you're in high school and college like money is scarce so like you can't really uh you don't have a uh a, a pool to 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 take from mm-hmm. like uh i just didn't have the means to do what I wanted to do with it. So I went on to my next project. Mm-hmm. But There's actually a funny story behind how I got that first camera because it was like, it was incredibly specced for its time. Like it could yeah. shoot raw video, which is, it's like taking 24 still photos every second and then just putting it into a folder and then with a file that tells it tells the computer it's a video. It's oh, yeah? insane. Yeah, the quality is so good. Um, but I actually got that camera when I was getting my wisdom teeth taken out. It was Black Friday. I I was getting my wisdom teeth taken out on Black Friday. As soon as I woke up from the anesthetic, um, I was like, Mom, I need my phone, or I need your phone. I need to, like, order that camera on Black Friday because it was half off because that camera was, like, $1,000 at the time. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, that was a lot. for $1,000 is still a lot. I mean, yeah, but, you know, it was a lot for ninth grade. Someone in ninth and tenth grade, Yeah. yeah, for sure. So that was a huge investment for me, but it was for on for on sale for five hundred dollars yeah. uh, on Black Friday only, and it was like I had to get it because that was the only opportunity I had to like get an incredible camera. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how did you make money in high school? What did you do in high school? Um, like, do you have uh, random uh, jobs? Oh yeah. So well, I cut my neighbor's grass, and then I also worked at Subway for a few years. I worked at Subway for a minute, and I, I th- it was the worst time of my life. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's funny that I worked at Subway because uh, so my last name's Metrovich, which is why I created my my business Metro Digital. Oh, that's where I named Subway. Came from. Yeah, Subway is Metro, so I still work at the same place. It just has a different name. Oh wow! You know? A little play on words. Yeah, that's pretty but, cool. Yeah, that was my first logo before. You were I, a like, sandwich artist. Yeah, but that was my first logo. It was like a Subway map that spelled out Metro. I like made it in like Adobe Illustrator. It That's looks sick, terrible, but you know. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Like these podcasts, these first few that I'm going to do, I'm going to sound like a fool, mm-hmm. and they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be like perfect or anything. But yeah, got to grow with what you can. Yeah, for sure. But uh, Subway artist, so you worked there, you cut some grass, saved up some money, bought this camera. So what did you do after that? You got this camera and you started making videos with your friends. Yeah. So what was the next step there? It's um, like, uh, did, you, did you concentrate more on video? It's like, how did you get into photography from there? Photography was an afterthought to me at the beginning. Um, but then I... Th- I think all I I just bought I bought another camera on eBay. It was just a photography camera cuz I it was I only had a video camera. Yeah. So I needed a photography camera as well. 
and I just got a super cheap digital camera. My first camera was like a mirrorless interchangeable camera, so that's weird for me as well because most people start on like a DSLR, like a yeah. T3i or something. Mm-hmm. I started on mirrorless, and the camera I had, it was a Lumix G1, I believe. Okay. It, it had like an electronic viewfinder. Like it wasn't glass that you were looking through. It was like an actual screen in the eyes. Oh, really? So that was like revolutionary for its time. Yeah, kind of for thing. sure. Um, so I, I also got, I, you know, I kind of got to cheat because I never had to learn how to. I mean, I, I know it now, obviously, but like I never at first you were had to worry time. about yeah yeah exactly it was just like the the technology was already advanced yeah so i never needed to learn any of the like older stuff like live view is a thing and you can kind of just adjust settings for what you need yeah because you can preview it you don't have to take the picture and then find out it's bad later like uh, with older okay. dslrs even current like, like dslrs um but if you're not using live view you can't see what you're going to get before yeah, you take the sense. picture so you got to have a bunch of trash to uh get rid of yeah until you find the good picture that you have yeah but, uh, so uh, you got that camera and you started shooting. Now, after you got your first uh, picture camera, did you still focus on video? Were you trying to do both things? Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I do have like tunnel vision. I usually just work on one thing completely, like intensively at once. Yeah. But I mean, well, that's very hard now to do. But, you know, I mean, I because I, now I kind of work in a bunch of different fields. But yeah, I, I, I still did... Yeah, I, I did video, photo, and then I, I was teaching myself how to do editing for both of those things. Um, and this was all while you were still in high school? Yeah. That's yeah, and up. then I tried to, I started trying to find ways to make money with photography because um, video is a little bit harder to make, to, to start a business with, you know, because you need more equipment and stuff. Photography is a little bit easier. So I started taking like senior photos and like shooting different like sports events and like just That's selling how you photos or whatever. Always- Pretty much. Right. Um, yeah, and then th- that was that wasn't really like a you know justifiable income. That was just here and there, yeah, like just, just for fun, trying to make some money out um, of something you like doing. But then from there, I I got my Eagle Scout. We'll just fast forward to like my senior year of high school, um, yeah. Because so I I got my Eagle Scout, and then I I knew I, from there I wanted to go into like media production like video photo just anything okay. with that um so every year eagle scouts are invited to this um what's it called like a annual banquet kind of thing yeah. all, all the eagle scouts of that year are invited to a dinner okay but then you fill out a survey and say what you're interested in and they try to connect you with someone in your desired career field so then i was connected with a guy named Ime Alaquiva. um he is the kind of he's the CEO of an Emmy award winning company in Pittsburgh. Really? Yeah. And just right out of high school, even during high school, I actually got a work permit to leave school early and start working in Pittsburgh in a, with a production studio. That's awesome. My first, my first like production ever was with Wiz Khalifa's mom. So that's oh, like wow. a crazy like, you yeah, know, for was, a first job. That's pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, that was my first one, and then my second one was with. Well, so what were you Eric doing Roberson. with them? I, sorry. Like, what were you doing with them? If that was like, if you were leaving early to go to work uh, with this production company, like, what kind of things were you doing for them? Um, I was actually at first I was like swing assist, so or like, I would I would just come in when they needed like an extra assist, and I wasn't anything like super yeah. crazy at, at the beginning. Um, or I would just kind of be like a production assistant or something. Yeah. Um, Extra set of hands to yeah, do whatever they needed. Yeah. And then a few times, like, he, he may would like hand me the camera, let me take some pictures or whatever. And then he yeah. realized that I already completely knew what I was doing. Yeah. So you kind of. And he just right, right there, he started like letting me use the camera. And like, so I actually became like a camera operator. So. And this I, is right I, out of. This is while you were in high school. This yeah. is still happening? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So that first production with uh, Wiz's mom, like, what was that? Um, I forget the context of it. I I don't remember what it was exactly. I think it was it was some event. It, I can't remember exactly the context, but like while I was still in high school, a couple of the other things that I do remember. Um, I got to film a commercial with 
for Rachel Ray for Pup Night at PNC Park. Oh, yeah? And then what was something else we did? Um, I met Future. Oh, yeah? That, that was another crazy thing. When did you meet him? I, I think I was still in high school. The, when he, went, he and Drake were in Pittsburgh for a tour, but like Future wasn't performing. So he was at Savoy, like that club in the strip district. Okay. And like I got a call. So this was like what, three years ago? T- uh, two. Two years ago? Yeah. Okay. Or, wait, yeah. Two? Yeah, two years ago. That's pretty wild. Yeah. So what did you do for that? Um, I just showed up and took pictures. And you um, took pictures of the performance that they were doing? Oh, it wasn't like a performance. It was just kind of like future was just there uh, okay. so it was so just like, like kind of take taking photos of him interacting with people that's sick though so, how yeah was, that was uh, how was meeting him what was he like that was it was interesting it was cool i i really didn't understand how to like i've never been in like that environment before I'm and that sure. was like you it has know, to be weird it's like uh you know, yeah like what i was 17 or 18 at the yeah 17 that'd I be think, overwhelming for sure because yeah. like you want to come off be like yeah like how are you gonna approach this guy yeah it, it was so weird so you took some photos for future and did you meet drake as well i didn't get to meet drake i actually had the opportunity i was given a ticket to actually go to the concert but like the ticket was for like one of like the suites and uh, okay i wasn't i just didn't want to go i mean it was like Drake and Future's suite, like I, or, or like one of the suites with that like production company or whatever. Like it was like with them, with that whole group, yeah. So, like, because his like manager, or bodyguard or whatever, had extra tickets and he gave us them, and was like, "Feel you feel free to shoot this event as well." That's yeah. wild. Was that a paid and, event? Yeah, like you got paid for all that. I, stuff? I got paid for that. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. your first, uh, one of your first events is taking pictures for uh, Future and Drake. Yeah, I'm sure that that's. Uh, I mean, that, that had to be pretty crazy for you. Yeah, that was. And I, you were 17. I couldn't believe it. Like somewhere around there. Yeah, 17 or 18. I can't. You know. Yeah, got to be overwhelming. Yeah, I think I was 18 at that time. Uh, so after yeah. like this Future and Drake event that you did, what was uh, what were some other things you did next? Like. Uh, you kept working with that company? Yeah, yeah, I still work with that company. Oh, I, st- okay. I still work with EMA. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah, and we we do awesome stuff like that all the time. It's, yeah, so, it's like, great. what are some other things you, like, like, I feel like, we're, I feel like we're getting a little bit ahead of it. So you did that event with Drake and Future, and then after that, like, uh, who else have you worked with? Um, I just saw on your Instagram the other day that you were at the Penguin game. Yeah, uh, that was actually night. that was for the Rachel Ray event. Yeah, same client, um, same same studio, same client. Yeah, that was. Uh, so, do you work for the Penguins a lot? Uh, I don't work for the Penguins, but we are affiliated. We get to shoot with the Penguins a lot, oh, that's depending awesome. on like certain events, like whether it's like a meet and greet at Macy's because we work with Macy's as well, and then damn, um, you work with a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's probably an interesting job though. I mean, like it, you're it's very interesting. Moving. Yeah, um, Ime's line. It's uh, be, what's he say? Beats a cubicle. It's like new office every day kind of thing. You know, we get to go all over the place. Yeah. Um, we're never kind of stationary. Especially as something you you love doing. So yeah, it's not even like work. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. It doesn't feel like work. I mean, it's it's like you get home and just like pass out on your bed. You're just exhausted. But like. It's worth every minute of it. Yeah. I bet. So uh, working with all them, what do you like? What do you yourself personally like more? Do you like video or photography more? Um, I I don't think I can like. I I don't know. Probably depends on the situation. Yeah, it it totally depends on the situation. It's more of like the style, like what I'm currently doing with my personal brand. Yeah, is the style that I like doing, regardless mm-hmm. of whether it's video photo design i'm dabbling in 3d and stuff as well so it's just a combination of like a specific aesthetic that i'm going for that i enjoy doing um but i guess to i guess to backtrack from the working with ime and his company so that that was my first like entry into pittsburgh so that that was when i started coming to pittsburgh because i really didn't have a reason to i was a high school kid from the suburbs i didn't have a reason to come to the city other than to shoot but then, you know, I, I figured I was downtown already. I would, like, look on Facebook for events to do. Yeah. F- to go to or whatever. And, you know, meetups or whatever. And I started going to, like, Instagram meets. 
Oh yeah. And then like Steel City Grammars was like yeah, I know is, is like are, a yeah. big Instagram page. And I got featured there a couple times to- on there like a couple times when I was like you know starting out on Instagram and stuff. That's and I awesome. Thought that was super cool. Um, they're still they're pretty big. Yeah. Pretty relevant now still, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I uh, I've, I've been following them for a minute because they've yeah. been around for it has to be what three years now, four years. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty sick. So you got featured on there a couple yeah. times. Yeah, and, and that was just for using the hashtag or whatever. So that was like a cool like feeling yeah, like validates have, have, how good your photos are. Because <laughs> you, you I mean, look at them pages and like they have a crazy amount of followers mm-hmm. and like, all them photos on there. Like to the untrained eye, like me, like I don't I don't know any of the techie shit behind it. So like, uh, it's almost like ignorance is bliss. It's like I'm sure you being a professional, at what you do, you look at people's photographs and you say like, "There's something right there. There's something right there that could be better." Like, you, yeah. you could you could nitpick things because uh, like, I, that's your main focus. I am such a critical person. Like I said, the perfectionist, like with equipment. And I mean, it's the same thing with like editing. That's like, understandable. Like I said, I work at that. I'm a manager at Threads on Carson, so like my my working there makes me more critical on like different types of clothes. Like I see like what what I like, what I dislike, what could be better. And, mm-hmm. uh, like quality for me is the same for quality as you. I mean, yeah. like in your profession, there's a certain level of quality that you want. And in mine, there's a certain level of quality that we want. And yeah. Like, that's just guidelines you got to follow. And like we were saying before we even started talking about this, like, uh, this is one of the questions that I really wanted to ask you. Like what's, what's your thoughts about like, all the Instagram photographers with their iPhones now, like how you have like the pixel phones and like the iPhone X's with the portrait modes and things like that. Like wh- what do you yourself think about that since you're a uh, photographer, like that's your profession? I would say a f- a photographer isn't, go- a photography isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Like an iPhone isn't going to replace an actual photographer because it's not about the quality of the camera. It's the actual, like, you know, composition and framing and, you know, like, yeah. actually how a picture is taken and what makes a picture good. There's actually, like, a science behind it. Like, it, yeah. one, once you kind of, like, learn how a camera works, you can make any camera work. Like, you, whether it can be, you know, an iPhone. Like, I have a ton of, like, like, I have the iPhone X and I use portrait mode and stuff, yeah. too, but, like, I never use that for professional work. I would never, you know. Now, to play devil's advocate, though, you have people that, I mean, to get professional photography work done obviously costs a decent amount of money. And for someone like me who doesn't have any knowledge behind that, uh, some people might not notice the same things that you're noticing yeah. as far as, like, quality-wise. Mm-hmm. So, like, some people could take pictures with this phone and be like, that's fine. Like, that's, yeah. that's well, all I need. Actually... I'm going to take back what I said about, like, I would never, because I do. <laughs> so I actually, I do use my iPhone for, like, B-roll a lot. Like, Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's I mean, I use it for a lot of video and, like, sometimes photos, and, like, they're passable. Like, you can definitely use... Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, you um, could, like, like for me, being the untrained eye, I could scroll through and, like... Uh, see a photo and think like, man, that's that looks awesome right mm-hmm. there. And it could just be a regular iPhone photo. Yeah, one one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken was a screenshot from a video. Like, uh, yeah. I I took a slow mo video. I was in um, I was in the Grand Canyon with a travel company, Have Fun Do Good, um, and it was like storming, but it was like sunny out, and I I just got it. Like I started filming. And there was a there was a like a double rainbow and then a bolt of electricity, Holy and then shit. all like and they crossed each other like it made an X in the sky. And you got that photo? And I I got the video of it in oh, slow. Yeah, it, I it, I couldn't capture it with a, uh, on my cam on my phone. Yeah, I couldn't not capture enough, it as a right? photo, and I knew I wouldn't be able to like, you know, snap that. So I took a slow mo video and just screenshotted it. But so, you know, and it looks good enough. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. So that, like, but back to what I was saying about that, it's like. Uh, what's what's to make someone like choose to hire a professional photographer rather than like let's say for family photos of like uh, you just had a kid one year old like what's to hire someone to take professional photos whenever you could take a photo with your camera like wh- what do you think about that like because I, I feel that uh, let's say like uh, 
the average person might not be as like techie as like you or I or things like that. Mm. And like they could just suffice for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you totally could like suffice yeah. for that. But um, I think the appeal in hiring like a professional is the guarantee that you're going to get good work. Um, and then I think it, it's more about. I think like ten percent of being like a photographer, or videographer is actually like taking photos, and yeah. like the other like ninety percent is like actually running a business. Yeah, and you're not going to be a successful photographer if you don't know how to run a business. Absolutely. So, or, or like video or anything. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say the appeal of getting a professional to do photos is. I, I yeah the the quality is definitely going going to be there and then ah that's a good question it's a good question because yeah. like that's the things that I think about it's like I understand that like to be a professional photographer uh, you're gonna get a photo that is like perfect like, like yeah. obviously a professional is not gonna give a customer a piece of work unless it's perfect because they don't want to have their name tied to something that's not perfect. Yeah. But, and, and, and that's, that's where I think it's, it's, it comes down to the client. Do they want something that will just suffice or do they want something that's perfect? It's up to them at the end of the day. Yeah. But so. the client might not know what is perfect and what's not. It's like, uh, like I said, ignorance is bliss. Like for instance, like, uh, someone who does music, uh, let's say that, uh, someone who's very passionate about music knows the ins and out. They could hear like certain pitches in people's voices, things like that, that I would not be able to hear because I have no experience in that whatsoever. So like for me to look at a photo, I might think it looks great, but you mm-hmm. can look at it and see a whole basket full of just like problems, things yeah. that could be done better, things that could be done uh, uh, more correct, like better lighting, things like that. And uh, that's the thing that, that interests me is like all these phones that are coming out are like uh, like the Google Pixel phone or whatever that's called, the, the, the iPhone X. I, I love shooting with the Pixel. It's beautiful. I don't know anything about it. I've strictly been uh, an Apple person for yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, I, I have the X right now. But. Yeah, it's just like I, I just don't know. Like I've, I've heard that that's the best camera on a phone right now. Yeah. And I feel that uh, me growing up, like my parents always had – a camera they were always taking photos like always taking pictures and stuff like that and uh a lot of the world is just like regular people who not necessarily need a professional photographer so like yeah. what what do you think uh what do you think that i feel like that things are just going to keep getting better and better mm-hmm. you know so eventually but- like people could use these phones and they could take photos that kind of look professional yeah. so like what's to keep photography like uh like current and not current, but like still what's to keep professional photography, like still relevant. Like, what do you think that is, uh, I guess that's a, I guess that's a loaded question because like it all depends on the customer. Yeah. It, it, to- it totally depends on the customer. And then it's also based on, I would say like aesthetics and like style. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good point because like, would you say that you have a certain style yourself? Yeah. I have a certain style, but then I can also like, I, I know, I, yeah, needs. like I, I know how to cater to another, like to a client or something. Whether they they're like, I usually have if I'm doing like a photo shoot, especially for fashion or something. If yeah. it's like, you know, fashion photography, especially like a clothing line or something, they want a, a certain aesthetic. Yeah, like, you don't want to have like too much edit on there because, yeah. like, from a fashion point, it's like people you use them pictures professionally to put on like your website or things like that. People purchase clothing and uh, different products from those pictures, so like you can't really edit it too much to like change the color or yeah. or the contrast or. I mean, I don't really know the technological terms behind mm-hmm. it all, but, like, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just, like, so I guess that that question is definitely dependent on uh, the customer. Yeah, so... That's a good point. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, a lot of photographers, like, you'll see Instagram pages, like, everyone, like, kind of, like, has the same edit on every single one of their pictures. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, like, because their feed looks cohesive or whatever. Yeah. And that's fine, but... 
And, and I, I I do it with my like branded page because it's branded, but yeah. like on like my personal yeah, one, like, I want to show the blues that I can. and like the oranges, and I see like yeah. a lot of the darker and like uh, yeah. like I said, I don't know the technological terms behind it, but like I see like a like a pattern with your photos. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess what you're saying, like that I, that I can understand, is that like because you have the knowledge in it, you're able to to take different ways of it like you're you're able to cater to what people want differently yeah I like think that's I'm, what separates people from an iphone to like yeah being a professional yeah i mean i could i could go do a shoot with an iphone happily and like go i could do like a fashion photo shoot and then go shoot real estate or something and like and then go shoot food and i would do all three completely different like you yeah. know i would they would be edited different differently they would different be framed things. differently like you know, the iPhone now has, like, the two cameras, so I have a wide angle and a telephoto, and I would use those for different purposes. Yeah. You know, like, th- there's... That's a whole different it's, world. It's the fine details that matter, I guess. So, like, do you have certain people that you'd say inspired you growing up? Like, uh, as far as, like, photos or videos, like, is there anything that sticks out that you uh, remember watching as, like, a younger kid thinking, like, man, like, this is uh, this is a person that I want to, like, strive to, like, be like? Yeah, I like I like all the disruptive people. I don't like any I mean What do you mean by disruptive? Um I like the people who like think outside of the box and like do different things like Oh, okay. Um YouTube, for example, um Casey Neistat, if you know who that is. I do know who that he, is. He he you know, vlogged for however many years. Like yeah. he vlogs like every single day. Well he doesn't anymore, but that was like a big thing he did. It was like he made a vlog every single day and they were like cinematic, like they looked good. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so that was kind of like an interesting take on like, he created a style uh, that was never like created before because like the internet and like, you know, that couldn't have been done like in production. Uh, usually with video, you need like a ton of equipment and stuff. Yeah. And, and his was more personal. So he could kind of just have a smaller like footprint as far as like equipment. Casey Neistat, David Lynch. I really like David Lynch's work, like the Twin Peaks. Oh yeah, yeah, I filmmaker. Was, I was yeah, say, yeah, filmmaker. Yeah. Um, Were you real big into movies growing up? Growing up, no, but I went to film school for a little bit. Yeah, and yeah, but um, and I appreciated history. That okay. that was the big thing I took out of film school that I probably would have never learned is like the history of like American and foreign cinema. Okay. Um, you know, because you those classes you actually sit there and like watch the entire movie and then talk about them and stuff and then the history behind them yeah that's that would be fascinating so, so yeah learning the history of like film is really important i think for people in my field because then you can kind of like reference and then it's a world of inspiration too like i'd say as far as filmmakers so like david lynch jj J. abrams christopher nolan all the ones that, like all the ones that make stuff you have to like think about yeah for sure the like, more in depth and then a lot of like sci-fi stuff i love too of you course super eight yeah oh my god yeah like i love that that's a f- that's one of my favorite movies like i love shit like that yeah and you said you're like a, a techie nerd so like you're into like the sci-fi things like that mm-hmm. like uh um i think that I think that Super 8 was so cool because, like, it reminded me of, like, growing up, like, I would be filming videos with my friends and things like that. And yeah. it kind of threw in the whole, like, E.T. almost. Like, it was, like, a mix between, like, E.T. and, like, uh, uh, what was the other movie? Um, the Goonies. I mm-hmm. can't believe I forgot that. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for um, Ready Player One. That's about to come out. Ready Player Steven One. Steven Spielberg. It's about like VR. It's about virtual reality. But oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if I've seen that. Yeah, it's going to be the new like Spielberg film, but I would definitely check that out. So inspirations, and then uh, yeah, those those are like filmmaker inspirations. Like well, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then music is a huge inspiration too. Like if I'm not like talking to people, I usually have my earpods in. Yeah. So what kind of stuff do you listen to? Um, I'm really big into hip hop. Oh yeah. Um, I used to listen to like a lot more like alternative like punk and stuff like when I was little, like like middle school, yeah. getting into high school, and then like as I got exposed to hip hop more, when I started coming to Pittsburgh and actually working in the hip hop field, that's when I began to appreciate it and actually listen to. Yeah. It. And now I basically just pretty much listen to like hip hop and R and B and who stuff are some like of that. your favorites? I like electronic music too, of course, but okay. Um, 
Uh, favorites. I'd say Childish Gambino. Okay, yeah, I'm a fan. Um, the Weekend. Oh, man, there's so many. Be Maddie I, and Jack. <laughs> Be Maddie and Jack Sarasulo. Official. Waves official. Waves official. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I would say that musical artists, I mean, the ones I'm currently listening to are Childish Gambino, Tyler the Creator, um, The Internet, Travis Scott, ASAP Rocky, Black Bear. Oh, man, Black Bear is one of my favorites. I love, yeah, I love Black Bear. Brock Ampton. I mean, I'm just going through my phone right now looking at artists. I am a uh, big fan of Black Bear. He's definitely dope. So, like, you said hip-hop inspires you like that. Have you have you worked with any local hip-hop artists um, or R&B artists? Like, you do any work with them? I, I've worked Jack and B. Maddie, Jack Saracillo, and... At Official Waves. Brandon Maddie. Check them out. Yeah. Um, I got to shoot Hilltopolis, Work Hard PGH, put that on. Oh, uh, yeah, they did yeah. Uh, with... Uh, um, the Cool Kids. Yeah, Cool Kids. PK and PK performed. and Pet Zebra. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. Yeah, I, that, uh, just I didn't get to make it to that show, but I just watched a video that uh, Buzzy uh, Buzzy Turek up at Epicast showed me. Uh, it looked like a crazy time. So, what's some of your favorite projects that you've ever worked with? Like wh- that, that stand out? Like, what do you have a favorite? Or uh, one of my favorite projects I've gotten to work on was last year. This wasn't even photo or video. This is why I, like I hate labeling myself because I love doing so many different things. Um, Martin Patosny, um of Lux Creative um, asked me to kind of create an installation because he he saw that I do like like digital art. Yeah, and I I like I like learning how to like glitch things and corrupt things and like edit photos in like a weird way. Yeah, and, you know different editing styles. Um, again, res- reminiscent of like sci-fi or dystopian yeah. or whatever. But. Um, Martin Patosny of Lux Creative asked me to be a part of something called Bra Day, Breast Reconstruction Awareness Day, and he gave a bunch of different artists female mannequins to, like, interpret and do whatever they wanted with. So that was my first, like, go at creating, like, a physical piece of art. Yeah. Um, That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So I I got my friend uh, Kelly Brennan, who does, like, art direction – and production design and stuff. Okay. Um, she helped me with the physical aspect because I'm mostly a digital person. Yeah. Um, so we spray painted it. We like we painted it chrome and gave it like a leather jacket and stuff. Um, but to like make it kind of look like a robot. Yeah. But I put a computer monitor on the head of the mannequin and oh, had it, shit. Had, like had a display, and I had a com- like a small computer called a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it's I like know a, that is. Yeah, it's like a small computer, like powerful enough to like run one program or something. Yeah. Um, so I, I like programmed it so like you can plug this mannequin into a wall like a lamp and it boots up so like it can say like welcome or something on the screen that's awesome you know, so where was all this at this was at the mine factory um, oh, okay you know yeah the mine factory and where's that uh, I, I don't, Pittsburgh I just know of it oh, okay yeah I just yeah. know of it that they do a lot of different things okay yeah that's um, pretty sick though yeah it was now, where's I, that it was, piece at now um, Martin actually was the one that bought it, which is super humbling, but it, it was, it was sold for charity. It was auctioned off for charity and it's actually Martin bought it. So it's at Lux creative offices right now. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. So now what exactly is Lux creative? I'd say Lux creative is the, they're just like a fully fledged, like production studio, like does all kinds of different yeah, stuff. They or like event production. Um, that's sick though. But one of their one of their big things is uh, like Martin is like super into neon lights and lighting and projections and his work really like he's he's like we have very similar work. Like we like the same things. Like we both love neon lights, have this weird obsession with neon lights and stuff. So it was really cool to be able to work with him, to work with someone very like minded but in, in like a completely different field. Yeah. You know cuz I kind of I'm the one that captures the stuff that he you know designs. Yeah. Um, but it was cool to be a part of an event and actually like create something and like still be able you know I, I got to like program and build a computer and yeah. Like, so it's still more of the shit you like to do. Yeah, and that's that, sick though that he purchased it. Yeah, that that was the coolest part. I that, bet. Yeah. 
I bet that's definitely awesome. I'm curating an event soon as well. Like it's like a like we're gonna have like projections and like it's gonna be a physical event that you go to, but it's yeah. still in that same like style. So it's like just taking that whole entire like kind of like retro like eighties cyberpunk theme. Yeah. And like science fiction and a lot of that like a lot of the visual styles from that kind of like era and that look I want to like create content with that style. That's and, understandable. You know, work with different. Just want to be creative in your own way. Yeah, it's so hard to like. It's hard to describe anything yeah. like that because, like, uh, for being someone like younger, like yourself, like you're starting out. Uh, rather than, I mean, yeah, you've been doing it for a few years, but like, I mean, even me, uh, I still don't know exactly what I want to do. I don't know how to yeah. put a name, put a label on the things that I want to do in my brain. Yeah. And, uh, it's hard to it's hard to say that. That's why I mean that's what I love about like podcasts. It's like yeah. you have a conversation and like uh, as far as like people asking you questions, editing things out, and only putting the answer. It's like I like to hear the thought process behind everything. I like to hear uh, all the details, mm -hmm. and like that's that's what kind of made me fall in love with like the whole podcast platform. It it is. It's interesting. That's yeah, all I, it is because I, it's like you get both the best of both worlds. Like you get the answers to the questions that you want, but you also get to like, like you could expand on certain things and like mm. get more in depth with certain things. Like, like I'm fascinated that you're a boy scout. Like uh, <laughs> uh, I tell people that and they're like, Oh yeah. Boy scouts. Like, no, I'm, probably I'm sucked, proud of that. Like, man, it was some of the best times of my life. Like yeah. I love the outdoors. Like I love, I still go camping. I still go hiking, things like that. And it's just like, I learn certain skills and like traits from Boy Scouts that I still put into use today. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, and I, I hate when people aren't like, don't own themselves. Like, yeah, like I, I, I am, yeah, like I embrace myself as like a nerd and a Boy Absolutely. Scout. And like, I'm totally like, well, you know, I, I love that because it's like, I'm getting old and I like, am, I'm yeah. not going to be fake to people. It's yeah. like, I'm, I, uh, I take pride in myself saying that like I'm just my own person mm -hmm. like I'm gonna wear whatever I want I'm gonna act the way that I want and I'm gonna do the things that I want and if people don't like that then they don't like that it's just like I don't have time to like keep up these fake relationships and like fake uh business relationships you know what I mean it's just like I, I just want to be myself and if people like it they like it and if they don't they don't that's yeah. all you could do it's like that's the only way you could uh I feel like that that's that's the only way you could live a life and be happy. It's like, uh, yeah. I wish more people did that. Yeah. 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 I, I, I couldn't say that. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Yeah. It's just the way it got to be now, especially if you're a creative person. It's like, why cater to what other people want? Because that's not what you want to do yourself. Like, like I'm not going to put all my passion and drive into something that I don't want to do. You know what I mean? That's why I started this podcast. Like, I like talking to people. I like hearing what they have to say and like the way that they uh, go about things and like how they got to where they are today. It's just like, it's interesting. Everyone has a story. Everyone has ups and downs with it. Everyone has different things that they did that take, uh, that take place and just stick with them. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another thing I'm going to ask you, but to warn you, I, I'm not going to edit any of this out. So you have to be, uh, oh, no. yeah, it's not anything crazy, but uh, this next segment is called desert Island questions. I ask everyone, I'm going to ask everyone, and it's just something that I think is interesting. And it's pretty much just, uh, are you a fan of The Office? I've watched it. I don't like watch it as like a... So there's this episode, and uh, they get locked out of The Office, and they're just sitting around, and they're playing a game, and they say, uh, this is the Desert Island game. What would you take to a Desert Island? Oh, so okay. if you got to choose three movies to take to a Desert Island to watch over and over and over again, what would you take? The, it would probably be Interstellar, Chris Nolan. Pro That's um, a good movie. 2001 Space Odyssey. That's a good movie. And Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean? Yeah, Mr. Bean. That's is, a good one, too. Yeah, because I could just watch that over and over again and never, he like... He drops that M&M inside, oh inside the girl <laughs> and, like, washes it off. Like, man, I used to watch that shit all the time. Okay, so as far as movies... You got Interstellar, you got 2001 Space Odyssey, and you got Mr. Bean. Those are good answers. What about 
Are you a big reader? I'm not a huge reader. Do, have you have? Do you have three books that you would take? Hmm. So three books off the top of my head that I would probably bring is I just started reading Ready Player One. Okay. So I would finish that. I would bring that along with me so I could finish it. Okay. Um, Robinson Crusoe because it would be fitting. Okay. Because that's it's about survival and yeah. I would kind of use that book as a dictionary. And your Boy Scout handbook? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my third book would probably be if I could bring it as like a series, like the whole series. I'll allow this, it. Huh? I'll allow it. Um, it would be, it's like, it's called the name of this book is a secret and it's like a kid's series, but I just remember being like, I just really enjoyed it. I don't, I don't know if I know what that is. Yeah. It was like this, this name of the name of this book is a secret and it had like a weird cover hmm. and you, you never found out what the name of the book was. And like all the chapters, like I think like the second book in the series, like the chapters went like from like 80 to one, like they went backwards That's wild. and then there was like chapter negative one. Like it, they were, it was just like a really creative way to the, the author was super creative and the author was self-aware There would, there would be like some chapters in the book. It would be like chapter 3.5 and then the author just like makes a commentary. Yeah. Kind of like, like breaks happening. the plane. Yeah. Okay. That's what's it, up, it, it's almost like watching a movie that breaks the fourth wall. Yeah. But in it's a like book whenever form. in the movie they're sitting there talking to each other and they just look at the camera like real yeah. martial Yeah, and that's exactly kind of how this book read. I don't know. It was, but like it would go back to like narrative because it was about like it, it had a narrative structure to it. It was a story. It was like a kid's okay. story. But that's legit then. Okay, and uh, last one: three musical albums that you could take on a desert island. Okay, so the three albums that I would take on a desert island with me would be Because the Internet, Childish Gambino, Ology by Gallant, and Channel Orange, Frank Ocean. That's a good one. That's a good answer. That's a legit answer. Like, like a, you got one that has like some good rap in it, but then the other two... Have a good story like, behind it. Yeah, well, they're 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 like more singy R and B, like yeah. Frank Ocean and Gallant. I love them. Yeah, well, that's a legit answer, and uh, Th- that'll probably change tomorrow. But like, that's all right. My shit changes all the time. <laughs> uh, and this is the this is the most loaded question. No, oh, no. And, uh, this is what I find the most fascinating: how people answer. So, if you could have a conversation with anyone in the world, alive or dead, who would it be? We're going to be here till tomorrow. Um, I think it would be fascinating to talk to Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, then I was that's what I was thinking like someone like Kubrick or like even like mm, someone in technology as well like Yeah, Elon Musk would be crazy to talk to. Yes, okay. I would talk to Elon Musk. That's who it would be. It why did be? I why was that even like a thought? Like I would just, I, yeah, yeah. Elon Musk, any day, I would talk to him for the rest. Of, if I could only talk to one person for the rest of my life, it would be, well, I don't know if I could, I don't know, because I don't know his personality, but yeah, but I, I, w- I, I would definitely talk to him. Regardless, any conversation with him would be interesting, and you'd be able to take something from that. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, that's pretty much all I had to ask. Cool. Is there anything else that, uh, that uh, you want to say? I really like this podcast, and I would love to like put it, like share, you know, com- like share it and everything. Oh yeah, because this is like the most confident I've like felt in a podcast, and like the yeah. most in depth. Like it's in depth. Where, it's like, just like, I, like that's why like I didn't want it to be like just uh, someone knows. Like, why someone do you take can pictures. Like how did yeah. you get it? It's just like I want to hear all of it. Like I want to know that you were a fucking Boy Scout. Like I want to know that like yeah, because this has been the most in depth podcast as far as like my history and then my personal like what I think and what goes on in my head. Yeah, because like someone who doesn't know you, like I look at your Instagram, I don't know a thing about you because yeah. of that. All right, like me, like I post, I have three thousand uh, photos on there, and mm-hmm. I just post things that I love, whether it be like picture of a movie whether it be a picture of a, a piece of artwork that i bought it's just like yeah. i feel that i could get a little bit or someone could get a little bit of my personality just from my instagram page that's that's what i'm trying to do because i just booted up my personal instagram again yeah 
like, so I, like I, I, I look at that and I'll be able to see a little bit from you. Like I, I looked at that a little bit and I was able to see uh, some things that you posted. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as your like professional one, Metro Digital, yeah, I see who you're posting, and you could get a little bit from from that. But I, I don't know anything about you, yeah. and that's the goal of this podcast. That's awesome. Yeah, this is cool. So what's next for you? What's your next move? My next move is to further expand my personal brand or my creative alias, Metro Digital. Yeah. I actually created that company. It's an LLC. I created the name. It's actually legally lowercase, and it has a dot in it. So it's all lowercase, metro.digital, comma, LLC. Okay. And the reason I did that is because it's actually a functional URL. So if you go HTTP colon slash slash metro dot digital, press enter in like Chrome, my website pops up. It doesn't do a Google search. That's so it, it's a custom like URL I created. That's sick. Um, so I, I wanted it to be, you know, super like a more of a creative alias yeah, creative, where I can sure. completely nerd out and do whatever I wanted and not have that affect any of my other like professional work. Yeah. And not have that be reflective of my, you know, I don't, I don't want to put that I, if I shot a wedding, Metro Digital doesn't shoot weddings. Me, you yeah. know, Metro Digital just does like a very specific creative type of work that's yeah. reflective of technology. That's so I want to be able to create more, whether it's collaborating with other artists, whether it's like films or music videos or anything like that. Yeah. As long as it's my specific like style, I'm, I'm willing to like, you know, have it be flexible what this brand actually is but I want it to be an outlet, a creative outlet for me where yeah. I can create physical art, digital art, anything, any. So rather than you be outsourced by a different company to work on a project that you don't necessarily choose yourself. Yeah. Metro digital is your way of choosing your projects and the work that you do under your creative guidelines. Yes. That's that exactly right? what it is. Yeah, that's you, you said it better than I could have said it myself. It's all right. That's. I mean, I, <laughs> my job with this whole podcast is to kind of let you or any interviewee uh, go off and talk about what they are, and I'm pretty much just driving the car. That's awesome. It's like whenever it goes off the rails a little bit, like I'm cool with it going off the rails. Like I want to hear about all that stuff. But I also need to bring it back sometimes because we could go on for hours and just talk oh, yeah. about dumbass I, shit yeah. that will just go anywhere. And like I could talk to people for I could talk to anyone for hours. Mm -hmm. We could touch on a hundred different things, but that's why I wanna that's why like I have this script in front of me with some questions and uh different bullet points. Just like I wanna keep it somewhat on the rails. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I, and that's that's what I think is different between like a regular interview compared to like a podcast. It's like we have some more creative freedom to expand on what we want to and uh, kind of dive into things a little bit deeper. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. So, like, I mean, that's pretty much it for questions for, from my end. Uh, yeah, man, thank you so much for sitting down and doing this with me. I think it went very well, and uh, I had a great time talking to you. So yeah, thank uh, take you. a second and plug anything you like. Yeah, um... If if you were interested in what you heard, you can either follow me on pretty much anything at Matt Metrovich for all my personal stuff, and then for my creative stuff, it would most likely be at Metro Digital on Instagram. Yeah, and I'll have this below in the description, so you could uh, it'll be hyperlinked, so you can just click on there, and it'll take you to wherever you need to go. And uh, yeah, man, it was great talking to you, and uh, I'm excited to see what's next for you. Thank you. And uh, that's it, guys. I appreciate you listening. Uh, please subscribe, rate, and leave me some feedback so I could know what I'm doing well and what I could do better. Uh, you could stay in contact with me and follow me on social media, Facebook, I'll Call You Right Back podcast, Instagram, I'm at I'll Call You Right Back, Twitter, at ICYRB podcast. Or you could email me at I'll call you right back at gmail.com. And I'm going to try to be pretty active on all this so I could uh, give you guys a better product and know what uh, I could do better. So uh, thanks again, everyone, and I'll call you right back.